No, 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 no. Alright, you're right, guys and girls. Welcome back. Today it is Friday, 8th of January. It's just coming up to 10 o'clock. And, oh, I tell you what, I really hate the double standards in this country right now. For the UK. Completely. We're in lockdown, right? So, obviously, I think it was at tier three. Mm. But uh, technically, it's not a tier no more because it's a lockdown. It's like lockdown three. Now, I get the lockdown 100%. But what I don't get is the double standards in this country is making me really sick to, to the point, right? And I'm going to actually, I'm going to uh, point out, right? Mm. Oh, mm -hmm. All right. So, we have shops, right, uh, in town that you could say is non-essential or essential, depending on where you're going to. Now, we have the MPs. They tell us all to stay at home, lock ourselves down until next month, until February, right? And I get it, yes, great, lock everybody down. Make sure no one goes off to work and stuff and all of that. Make sure all the economy goes to crashing down. That's what we want. We want the economy to crash. So no one's making any money. So when we just left the, um, the EU, the European Union, but technically we're still in the EU, regardless of what you guys are going to I think they still got a hold over us in that form of way. And it's only going to get worse within the next six to eight months. Uh, probably even um, next couple of years, it's still going to be a lot worse than we are now. If you thought last year with this lockdown was sort of bad, we haven't seen anything yet. Uh, they're saying about all the deaths uh, rising now. got an extra 1,300 deaths now with this virus thing going on. Obviously, that's what they've been saying on the news and what Boris has been saying with his little sort of graphs and all that but what we do not have in our country is consistency and this is what really annoys me we do not have stability as well we're not having that stability in our country and i'll tell you why because one minute we've got the children going off to school saying next the first thing he goes boris johnson said right we're going to get all the children back to school on, um, Sunday. on Sunday. The minimal risks is really low. They'll go back um, on Monday. And they'll go back on the Monday. It's Monday. Monday, yeah. So, and now... On Monday, yeah. he's changed it. And now, oh, yeah, now Monday. he's changed it. Sort of like, he's basically messed it so all up. Sunday, he said they can all go back to school on Monday. Mm. And on the Monday, stopped. Stopped, yeah. And I thought it was essential. I thought that would be essential to get the kids back to school so they can learn so they don't become thick heads because i think this is what our government wants is the children to become thick heads and not learn um in that essential way and i think it is 100 percent positive that we get these children back to school regardless of what's going on right now and just be more protective and more secure in these schools ah, and more but I'm not. well they stopped the children from going back to school. Yeah. But he said the babies. Yeah, the babies in the go nurseries back. and all that. They're the still nurseries. allowed to go there. And vulnerable children are yeah. still allowed to go. So why are we putting the more vulnerable children and, nursery ones? and the nursery ones at risk and then saying to the rest of the schools, us, right, well, we'll t take you home and all the college kids as well and them not learning their education. They're not going to find out about their exams and all that, if they've passed it or not. They're not allowed to take yeah, it. Yeah, they're not allowed to take it. I know. So what the teachers have to do, they have to decide now whether this kid um, has actually passed that test during his course at the, uh, the, the actual school or the college or whether um, he hasn't passed and whether he's got a future or not. So you're putting these kids at risk to uh, have a better education, maybe to go off to university a little bit later down the line, or whether to pass on and go to the next thing, or maybe to stay at home. I think at the moment, we are sort of on the the actual 
the tether of it of what's going on because we're being told one thing and then we're saying something else to us we're being told something else and what i really hate in this country is the double standards that mps and people like um that scottish well what's her name that one from Scotland. Yeah, that a Scottish MP woman. I can't remember her name. Anyway, um, so this that Scottish lady is the MP. She broke down, uh, broke the lockdown rules by going to a funeral, and I think it was somewhere along the lines where she didn't even have a mask on, was it something like that? And I think, and but, but everybody else has to wear a mask. Everyone else must not break the rules. Then we've got day. Um, like she said. Yeah. I am so sorry. Yeah, but sorry doesn't count it so if, if she ends up five? killing someone. Because if you broke the law, you get fined. But she said, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, but what happened? She didn't what, pay, I she mean, didn't pay anything, did she? But would she, would she actually be sorry if she had that, uh, that um, convict, that 19 virus, and gave it to someone and they ended up dying because well, she say, gave it to them? Well, I'd say, instead of her saying, Sorry, mm. why don't she get fined and put the money? Well, no, back that's in. what I was just about to get to in yeah. that. But the thing is, also we've got people like Boris Johnson's dad, right? One, I mean, obviously our prime minister, he's been put in there in the first place. I thought he was uh, really good um, at the start. I actually gave him a fair chance, and now I think, to be honest, they should get someone else in there. They should be getting someone else in charge because it feels like. We've just got a bunch of Muppets actually running the entire sort of the cause of problems of this virus. And I don't think they know what they're actually bloody doing in charge and stuff. We're going to have more deaths at this rate because they couldn't lock it down, the country down, back in March properly for at least eight months. Otherwise, we wouldn't have this bloody problem in the first place. The death rates would have gone down. We would have had more control over this thing and it would have gave us more time to actually get this vaccines out there a bit later down the road oh. to make sure... No, 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 I'm not saying that. I'm not, that's, I'll leave in that for now. That'll be for another uh, video. Okay. Yeah, no, I know what you're on about. I'm not about that, but... Thing is, at the moment... Um, thing is, we need consistency. If we do not get consistency, how is everybody else going to follow the rules? I've just gone into... Well, a few days going back... I went to that B and M store. Um, one of those big places. They sell like all kinds of products in there and stuff. And what I've noticed, the amount of people going in there with no masks on at all is ridiculous. Me and my mum went into the B and M uh, B and M store. We were wearing our masks, and there was like 10, 15, 20 people in there with not one mask on there. Now, obviously. And what was that? What say? What they say? Oh, well, we we don't want to put uh, any of the staff members at risk by telling these people that they should be wearing a mask or actually enforcing the mask. Well, what about these supermarkets as well? They're doing exactly the same. They're not enforcing it. They should be enforcing these people to wear their masks, regardless if they've got a condition or not. Because the next minute you could be giving it to someone else inside that building. Right, and then what's happened next? Oh, the pandemic goes up and up and up and it makes it even worse. But you can't go to a shop and buy clothes. Yeah. You can't go to a shop and buy uh, winter boots or things. Yeah, yeah, because they're uh, boots and shoes because and that, stuff. That's, that's not that's, essential. Like Boris said, that's not essential. Yeah. Now, what's so... I mean, that is essential. Mm. I mean, God, is, is he on God in the head? Yeah. I bet. And also, what really gets, uh, gets me... I went to the Sovereign Centre the other day in town. And what really annoys me about the Sovereign Centre, not the, the Sovereign Centre itself, but this one particular shop, they sell books, water stones. Nothing wrong with them. I'm, I'm not like sort of digging at them at all. But what really annoys me is how come they're closed. It's because Boris Johnson's closing all these little places down, these little small places. And well, the thing is, you could say, you say, well, books and stuff and reading material, that's not essential. It, I think, to actually, I disagree with you on that. I think it's more essential because once you read a book, you're learning. 
you're learning about that book and you're learning the education beyond that book and also um and the kids can be learning yeah, and all the apostrophes and all the stuff where you got learning on the actual book and the story as well. And the story takes you to these imaginable areas of imagination, to these imaginable worlds and stuff. And it's amazing. Like, I mean, I don't read books as much. I would like to read more books and stuff, but I don't have much time and stuff because I'm always doing stuff like That's helping it. my mum around it's, the house. It's or, um, newspapers. Yeah. That's well, no, no, newspapers is a lot, a lot of uh, propaganda and yeah. newspapers so why and is stuff. Newspapers? Yeah, why newspapers? No, the thing is they should get rid of newspapers and all that shit because it's full of crap in there anyway. You know, like, uh, we already know it's full of crap. But I think if you go out into the real world and you see what the real world is actually like instead of like reading what's going on in the news and the TV and shit in the first place, right, I think you'll find the whole world is a lot different than sitting on our asses all day doing absolutely fuck all and all that but i do find though uh, some of these shops should be open and some of the shops shouldn't be open i think um it should be the fact that places with books places with clothes because obviously if you haven't got no clothes or something at home well, or you've ripped or if you've ripped one of your clothes or maybe trousers maybe you've got bigger in the last six months and you need to get some trousers or something and, it, oh that. God, not and due to the fact that we can't go out and get any exercise as well i think gyms should be still open but i think they should be controlled to how many people can go in and out um because that's essential because you need a healthy body and if you're going to get a healthy mind you need a healthy body to go with it so obviously people can't go to the gym people can't go out and about now and also there's this new rule now Apparently, you're not even allowed to sit on a fucking bench now, out and about oh, in a park. Damn you. But so, could basically, the police could come up and say, oh, excuse me, what are you doing sitting on the bench here? Or, like, um, I was reading, watching one of Nigel Farage's videos earlier. What happens if you've got leg problems? Or if you've got arthritis and you need to sit down for a minute because you can't bloody walk? Or if you're in your 70s and 80s and you need to sit down? What they're doing is that, I think, to be honest, the police need to stand up and they need to say something on behalf of the people that basically they can't keep like going up to people and harassing them and all that. Because yeah. what, what are we doing at the moment? We're living in a government police state at the moment. They're and it's right, it's right. We're basically, we're being forced, locked in. Obviously, yes, we're, we got basically, I think, it's got to be down to the person at the end of the day, the individual, and to put a mask on. Me and my man wears a mask. I mean, and what, what's wrong with a mask at the end of the day? You're wearing one of these things, or maybe a visor over your face the if police, you can't wear a mask. The police should be out doing that properly. Yeah, they should be. The police should be out there. They but should be forced in to be doing the right thing. They should actually be doing the real jobs of like actually catching criminals and stuff. Instead of also, there was this one video I noticed where basically um, there was this one neighbour, dubbed this neighbour in, saying that there was someone in their house having a party or something. And, that was so, the day. and this was during the day. They were and they, were, they weren't even having a um, they weren't even having a party. Basically, this woman's daughter just come out of the hospital because she was very ill and she was going to her mum's house and all that. Next minute. Uh, I don't know if it's the husband or the boyfriend or something. Um, the, the police came in or came to sort of look in, break into the house and stuff to have a look to see if there was a party going on. And they refused to it. And it seems like the police now are starting to become more brutal. They're becoming more like the mafia in that way. And I think it's just all down to Boris Johnson and how he's actually implementing these rules in the fucking first place. And I think, to be honest, this is why we need a new strategy going in. We need people to stay in as much as we can. Obviously, the the death rates are going up. And I think the mortality rate on it is people in their 70s and 80s. Now, if we can get 70s and 80-year-old people to stay in, and people with vulner, uh, vulnerability, like heart problems, like me myself, I've got heart problems, but then as obviously we need to go out and get food and stuff. Um, and we need to get products and stuff go, to bring back the house. The bank, or we need to get the bank, no, go to the bank to pay the bills and stuff and all that. Obviously, you could say, oh, well, we could do it all online and stuff. 
But um, but then you can't do everything online at the bank. You obviously need to do something. And not everyone is going to have online, especially older people are not going to have it. So we need that consistency and we need that stability in our country. And we're not getting it. And Boris Johnson also... What really annoyed me as well, when we had that Rita Ora have her 30th birthday party last year. What really pissed me off is that she goes, well, we're going to put give, uh, was it she gave 10,000 to charity and all that for apology and all that. I think, to be honest, she should have been fined as well and all that in that yeah. sense. And I think, to be honest, like it's ridiculous, guys and girls. I mean, we need... To sort of like to worry. find a better strategy you and all. Get lost, you get yeah, let, let, yeah. If it happened to us, right? If it's just regular people, right? We would probably be banned up in prison by now. And I think, to be honest, it's absolute disgrace, disgusting what's going on in this country. We haven't got our freedoms at the moment. We're getting them taken away little by bit, every single fucking day. And obviously, right? We need, we need. To get that stability going. Even if we have to say to the old age pensioners, stay at home. We right. need you to stay at home, right? And obviously, this pandemic, oh, it is real. No, yeah. it is real. It is real, right? So if the people were saying, oh, it's not real, right? Then they're sort of like, they're doing fake news. And they shouldn't be doing that shit in the fucking first place. Because it's putting people's lives at but risk. Like Boris said, if you oh. want anything to eat... You can't go to a restaurant, sit down, oh. uh, and you've got a mask on you, and sit down at a table, mm. but you can have a delivery and you can sit outside in the cold and have something. That's yeah, oh, right. well, what happens if you've got the person that goes to the delivery door and stuff, and then suddenly you say you've got that uh, virus, and then suddenly they knock on the door, and then suddenly they're giving you the food, you could be end up giving them the virus. So, I mean... Even the delivery services would and be actually, putting you out. Or maybe if the delivery people had it to that point where they had it and they gave come to your house to deliver yeah. food, or they could have been in contact with someone who's maybe, got that virus. Maybe if you went to a supermarket to buy mm. something and you say, oh, there's a tin of things there. Or tomorrow say, oh, I'll have that. Oh, no, I don't mm. want that. After all. I'll put that back. I mean, what's that? <laughs> I mean, you can get that off that. Well, yeah. we don't know. We don't actually know yet by scientists if, like, we could catch it off surfaces or maybe off products of foods, tins of foods or one on the supermarket. And obviously, I think the supermarkets should be doing more um, safety checks. Oh, I've had smarters. Mm. Loose smarters. Mm. Oh, I'll put some money in the bag. Did you lose ketchup before you? Mm. You don't know. Oh, by the way, guys and girls, I'm eating a ginger biscuit at the moment, but that before another video. Um, 25p vegan ginger biscuits for 25p at Tesco's. Right. Amazing. Delicious. Um, anyway, so we need, right, one, we need consistency. We need the actual government to be truthful with us. And they're not telling us the truth, right? And they're not actually being stable with us as well because they're saying one thing to us and they're saying another thing to us. And they're doing That's one, one thing for us and another and one thing for them. So we need that actually, we need that some government to take over. I and mean, it's not going to be Labour because I don't like that Keir Starmer. I think he's absolutely obnoxious. I think he's putting our um, people at risk as well with this shit going on. I mean, it's, it's killing our economy. Obviously, we need to get people back into work. That's the most important thing. We need to get the children back at school. That's oh, very important. Any of that, though. Yeah, but oh, they don't no. want that. But the thing is, we need to get the kids back into education. So And also the students back in education. What's going to happen to that seven grand, eight grand that they're paying for their university fees? Do you know what's happening? They're actually still paying for it. What's the universities uh, going to do about this, eh? What are the universities going to do with the, the students that have already paid that money, but the universities say, sorry, we can't uh, give you a refund? Are they going to give the kids a refund? To be honest, I think, I thought a few years ago, but I thought they were going to do it so they would have free education. 
and free university fees. I thought they were going to have no fees on that university. You know why? Because I think it would be better for us. Why should we be paying for education in the first place when later in life we'll be paying it back anyway to the government later on in the first place? Because how I would do the system for free education is have it free, but later on, right, once they've got the skills, right, all those skills would come in handy later on. So basically, if they end up becoming a mechanic, I mean, a lot of the stuff now you're hearing, stuff with the university and all of that, a lot of these students are passing all these GCSEs and they're actually next to nothing. They're not actually getting anything out of it. They're not getting any sort of form of work. They're being put out of work now due to this bloody crap going on, this virus and stuff right now. Um, so obviously, and also... Um, we need more doctors and nurses because we've not got enough at the moment because a lot of them are getting sick and ill and stuff and um, or, or they're basically not well at all. Um, also, the NHS is going right down and we need to try and actually help. They're all on their knees at the moment. They're fully stretched out. So, obviously, we need to find, I don't know, some consistency. We need to help the NHS out as much as we can um, and maybe try and if you've got like a standard cold or standard uh, flu or something it's just probably I would say probably stay home unless it's uh, that convince and stuff but uh, I don't know what's going on but obviously we need to try and like find some people say mm. what do you want the doctors to do yeah a clap or extra money yeah, a clap or extra money. And I, believe and I was watching this uh, Alex Belfield the other day where he had these um, sort of healthcare workers on the show. And he said to him, what would you want? He said, do you want people clapping again outside? Yeah. Or, do, or, or do you want extra money? They want extra and they money. said they want extra money. They would. They don't want people keep bloody clapping for them outside. We know how good and uh, fantastic the NHS are. And well, not just the NHS. All the doctors and nurses around the world, you're doing a fantastic job. But also, that doesn't... You don't get anything out of a clap and stuff. Yeah, you get the, like, so, oh, yeah, uh, they're clapping for me and stuff. Thank you very much. And it's like... But then is, you've got to survive on money. You've got to pay your bills at the end of the day. If you've got bills to pay, uh, if you is a clap going to pay your bills for you? No, it's not. It's not. The bills are not going to... Right, you're clapping, right? If When you're clapping, right. that ain't going to pay your bills. No, like that amount. Yeah. It, it, gives, it gives you... Remember, motive, it could give you a little bit of boost that, on motivation, but... Remember that night? We were sitting down having our meal and mm. coke, and was, we were talking about it, and mm. there was a man who's a few yards away from us, mm. and he said, oh, I agree with what you said. And then he said, oh, wait a minute, I'll, I'll just go to this phone off. And then we found out that that man who was sitting by us was a doctor. Yeah, he was a doctor and he was depressed. And he was depressed. Because he didn't have any money, so he had he to try and borrow money go, off to friends and yeah, stuff. Yeah, he couldn't go to his mother mm. because he said... Because um, she was out of town. Out of town. And he couldn't get to and her he because they locked the country down yeah, and all exactly. that shit. And, and his, one of his friends, you know, phoned him up. Mm. And he said, you're the last person I could go. And he said, you know that? He said, I'm depressed. He said, I'm a doctor. He said, I can't get to my mother mm. because I've been uh, locked in. Yeah. He says, what can I do? But I think, to be honest, what they should be doing, the our government, right, if they want to help out as best they can, right, I don't think this lockdown would be any good anyway because people, the death rates are still going up. Regardless, we've been in it, what, in the lockdown now for, what, about a week already? And the death rates are going up. Obviously, because people have already uh, got it, so obviously they're going to try and count as many people. Are. But also, we've noticed not many people are listening to the government now. They're just like saying, "Ah, oh, fuck it," they're stuck. They're just doing it. Regardless, they're going out and about. And we went into town last week just to get some essential stuff like food from Tesco's, and um, I saw loads of people out and about. At the B&M store. No masks on at all. Like I said just a minute ago. And. Um, well they're not listening. And they're just doing whatever. And, they're, and also. They're supposed to be in groups of two. I've seen groups of three. Four. Five. And six. People out and about. 
So obviously there's something going on wrong in this country why they're not listening to the government. And I think if we could get a new government in power, get rid of Boris Johnson because he's doing an absolutely shit job. He should have been closed the borders. He should have closed the country. He should have stopped all the flights and airplanes back in last March when this already started and all that, guys and girls. But I think, to be honest, let us know in the comments what you guys and girls think and all that. I mean, do you think he should be out on his ass and all that? Do you think they should get someone else in power? Um, I mean, like Nigel Farage, I think he's doing a fantastic talks and stuff on it. And also, he's just brought back, reopened, uh, was it the Brexit party or something like that now? Yeah. So, um, so, obviously, they could use that um, to sort of get gain power to become part of um, 10 Downing Street. And he could become the Prime Minister of the UK and he could start doing some jobs. Um, but I don't know. Let us know what you guys and girls think. But anyway, guys and girls, stay safe. See you on the next episode and let us, let us know what you guys and girls think.